Bobby's Boat Sauce. Invented on a sailboat, boat sauce is so good that we literally scrape the bottle for all of the last drops when we run out in our house. Made in Portland, Oregon, it comes in classic and hot flavors. And you, our marvelous listeners, will get 10% off your first purchase at Bobby's Boat Sauce, all one word, dot com. If you enter the word Power Dog, all one word, all caps, at checkout. We are super fans. Give it a try, and you will be too. Hi, friends, and thank you for tuning in for episode 11 of season one of The Adventures of Power Dog and Dogland. This is our penultimate or second to last episode of this season, so hold on to your hats. As far as TikTok Bunny could tell, Taffy had bumped into the creature's backside and immediately fainted. He could not wake her up, but he picked her up and carried her further away from the creature, who rolled over a little, but did not wake up even a little bit, as far as TikTok could tell. Power Dog was still feeling pretty terrible after failing in his mission, and he still couldn't believe that it had not gone according to plan. And to add insult to injury, the heat had gotten to him and he did not feel well. As his brother drove Cody's dogmo speeder closer to the golden boat, he could see the outline of his mother's body standing on the bow of the boat, her nose in a hunting point and pointing right at them. He shuddered and reached out for Tuffy, shaking his paw gently to try to wake him. Tuffy did stir a little, which perked Power Dog up. Meanwhile, Taffy found herself floating again, but this time she was out in space, and that was extra, extra weird. She looked to either side and then down and then did another air somersault. She closed her eyes and scrunched up her face again to reach out to Tuffy, as it was the only thing that felt sane at all throughout this experience. She could feel him, and she could feel that he was sleeping. Wake up and find me, she commanded. Back on the speeder, Power Dog began to sob again, and Fetcher started to cry too. Tuffy awoke with a start, saying out loud, I will find you. He was confused to find himself strapped into a seat, and also confused to see Power Dog, still in a half-melted heat suit, crying in the seat next to him. What happened? he asked. That's what I would like to know, barked Mom Slice from the golden boat that had pulled alongside the speeder. She deftly hopped onto the speeder, surprising her sons with her agility. They all embraced. She held them tightly and said, You are safe now. I'm not happy with your choices, but I am happy we are all safe. Dog Wings jumped aboard and joined the embrace, too. Mom, Dad, I've, 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 I've failed, sobbed Power Dog. I failed everyone. We all failed, said Fetcher, who was also sobbing. The only thing you failed at was being a good listener, barked Bernie Sandals from the golden boat. Everyone turned to look at him. Power Dog? We never wanted you to fly into a volcano. That was just one bonkers idea and a long night of ideas. I'm sorry, 
but we all need to snap out of it and move on. Time is still of the essence, and we have a safer way to get lava. Huh? The pups were confused. They had never really questioned their own plan. It's true, boys, said Dog Wings. That was never a plan we all agreed was a good idea. Oh, said Fetcher. Are we going to go back to Meowie then? Oh no, we are not welcome back now, said Dog Wings as he looked down. Condro spoke up from the golden boat. Your theft of our suits and magma collection chalice caused quite a commotion, as it is what my twin predicted might happen if we let strangers come to Meowie proper. Theft of our technology is considered a high crime. I am afraid you and your entire family are banished from Meowie for life. What? What does that mean? asked Fetcher. Both parents put a paw on his shoulder. No, Power Dog was only trying to save everyone, like all of them. Don't yell at Condro, please. They gave up their seat on the council and may end up banished as well, just to help us, said Mom Slice. Condro remained calm. It is okay, I understand. But what about finding my sister, cried Tuffy. Yeah, yeah, cried Fetcher and Power Dog in unison. The adult dogs looked down for a beat, and then Dog Wings said, The Seekers have determined that they are not located anywhere on all of Dogland. What? All three pups barked in unison. Now, Back in the strange cave, TikTok Bunny was trying to figure out what to do next when Taffy finally woke up with a start, and he just barely missed her kick punch as she struggled to get up and stand on the cave floor. Whoa, what the hey? said TikTok. TikTok? Oh my dogs, I'm back. TikTok, am I ever glad to see you? Taffy was overjoyed and relieved before she turned back to being confused. So, okay, did I fully disappear from here? Did you? What? asked TikTok. No, you bumped into the creature, into his rear end, and then you passed out, and I tried to wake you, but you were just out cold. Huh. I cannot tell you why I think this for certain, but I think I connected with this creature. I do not think I was dreaming or imagining. It felt different. I think I even know their name. I think their name is Ba 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 Da Ba. TikTok just stared in awe at her, looked at the sleeping creature, then back to her, then back to the creature, then back to her and said, okay. Then his face was suddenly glowing bright orange. That's so strange, she said, before they both looked over towards the back of the cave and saw that the little pit of fire was growing and spewing a fountain of fire. Wait, was that lava gurgling up? Power Dog, Fetcher, and Tuffy were in shock over the news that Meowie's seekers could not find Taffy and TikTok Bunny anywhere on Dogland. The Fenix had said they knew they were alive and okay back on the Meowie communication platform, and Tuffy had definitely connected with Taffy. So what could this possibly mean? What does this mean? asked Tuffy. Listen, pups. This just means that the Seekers don't know everything, okay? said Bernie Sandals. Have they ever just not found anyone before? queried Power Dog. Everyone looked to Condro now. Condro seemed very calm and said, The Seekers always find what they seek. How long it takes is different every time. Everyone sighed. <sighs> Yes, said Mom Slice. It's true that we don't have answers. Yes, everything feels really hard right now. But does that mean that we give up because things are hard? Barked President Sandals. No, 
because we still have something we can do. We still have some try left in us. We may not have the best relations with Meowie right now, but they still need us, and every dog in Dogland is in this together. They all perked up and refocused, and they heard a, that's right, from the water, and everyone turned to look at the large white spotted sea dog bobbing in the water next to the golden boat. Yes, we must be getting on with our plan, he said. Dog Wings, who also had a renewed sense of hope, said, Oh yes, boys, this is Professor Spotty, his colleague Dr. Becca Rebecca Lute, and their star pupil, Seely, who is your age, Tuffy and Power Dog. The three sea dogs nodded. It is great to meet you, even if it is in such difficult and confusing times, said Dr. Lute. We are going to take you dogs on a dive under the volcano to the caves of Dogger Falls, Seely said excitedly. Everyone's eyebrows shot up as they looked back towards the volcano to try to figure out where there might be caves and waterfalls. A complete mystery. The three sea dogs guided the golden boat and the dogmo speeder to a beach under the shadow of the volcano. They swam so fast that even Fetcher had trouble keeping pace in the dogmo speeder, and Dr. Becca Rebecca Lou was doing some type of cool swirling motion, spinning like a living drill through the water. They had heard the otter-type sea dogs were fast, but it was truly amazing to see it. Seely dove down so deep that they didn't see him again until they were all ashore at the beach. Dr. Lute is the one who devised this plan, so we will follow her lead, announced Professor Spotty. Everyone nodded in acknowledgement and turned to her. Thank you, she said. We are going to take you to an underground cave system where our sensors have indicated that there has been abnormal activity, both volcanic and seismic. But also, the sensors picked up something anomalous that we cannot determine the meaning of. And it happened at the exact same time as the strange weather event above Lictopolis on the floating moon. She took a beat to let everyone take in this shocking information. President Sandals then spoke up. Why would an underground cave have information we could use? Everything up until now has been so strange that we need to carefully investigate everything that's strange. And this is strange enough to need investigating, so let's do it. Everyone nodded in agreement. There is, however, an unfortunate size constraint when it comes to getting into the physical space, continued Dr. Lute. And only a few of us will be able to dive through the tunnel system to get to the cave complex. Everyone nodded again. Dog Wings added, Professor Spotty, President Sandals, and I will be going to the Dogland Seas Institute lab to monitor the sensor equipment. Mom Slice then said, Power Dog and Tuffy, you will go with Dr. Lute and Seely. Fetcher noticed his name was not mentioned, so he stepped closer to his brother and cousin and put a paw on Power Dog's shoulder. Mom Slice smiled at him and said, Fetcher, I need your assistance on a potentially dangerous mission with Condro. All eyes turned to the Fennec, who nodded and said, We will indeed need to go tonight under the cover of darkness. A renewed sense of purpose and mission had everyone kind of buzzing with energy. Power Dog, said Mom Slice, I need to talk to you privately. It is very important. She led her son over to a small grouping of palm trees away down the beach. Fetch her, my boy, said President Sandals. I'm going to need to commandeer that speeder. Um, uh, I don't know about that. Fetcher looked confused and conflicted. Do you think you could just take the golden boat instead? Only Phoenix can drive these boats, said Condro. Fetcher sighed and reluctantly handed President Sandals the key. He was almost certain that he saw the slightest flicker of glee in President Sandals' eyes. 
He hoped that President Sandals would remain dignified and not try any stunts or hot-dogging in Cody's speeder. But who was he to tell the president of all of Dogland no? Meanwhile, TikTok Bunny and Taffy were getting a lot warmer as the pool of fire started to gurgle, and they were still trapped inside with a sleeping creature blocking the cave entrance. Both of their eyes were getting wide with fear, and the lava fountain reflected off of them. I think we just need to push Budaba, said Taffy. Like, wake them up, roll them over, I don't know. But I don't think they want to hurt us. I think we're all in this together. TikTok shrugged and looked around, just as the creature started to glow, like the orb it had been carrying. The creature started to levitate or float a little off of the cave floor. Glowing and floating, they woke up with a start, murmuring and mumbling, and then looking clearly very excited. The creature opened its mouth and hollered, and floated over to the pool of fire and covered it with their body. TikTok and Taffy scrambled to get out of the way and just stared, mouths open, eyes wide, and unblinking. The creature glowed and kind of danced, wobbling and floating, and covered the lava fountain, and then scooted to the side and sat down, clapping its hand-like appendages and making a sound that was not unlike a giggle. (laughs) kind of like a gurgle giggle and then the lava it was gone completely gone not even a glow from the pit taffy and the creature locked eyes she said very cautiously ba 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 and the creature reached out their arms to her she ran towards them as TikTok shouted, Wait! They might be hot! Like lava hot! But he was too late. Taffy was joyfully hugging the creature, who wasn't too hot to hug at all, but was still glowing. TikTok just stood there in disbelief. Well, maybe now I have actually seen about everything there is to see in the universe, he exclaimed as he scratched his head. Meanwhile, back at the volcano, Power Dog and Tuffy watched as the golden boat and the speeder took off in two different directions. Power Dog was still reeling from what a terrible, strange day he had had, but also from what Mom Slice had told him in the grove of palm trees. She had told him not to tell anyone until the time was right, and he hoped so hard that he would know when the time was right. He and Fetcher had swapped out the one and a half heat suits for legit wetsuits and some really cool fins that attached to your hind legs from a compartment in Cody's dogmo speeder. We must be leaving soon before nightfall takes what little light we will have in the tunnels to the caves, said Dr. Loot. And even so, we will all still need these. She reached into her pack and retrieved headlamps for all of them, which they slid on quickly. Are you guys ready? asked Seely. I think so, said Power Dog, and Tuffy nodded in agreement. He was very distracted and still thinking about his sister and how they had achieved the strongest connection of their entire lives earlier in the day. Just one request, said Power Dog. Can you not go too fast that we can't catch up? Seely laughed, <laughs> and Dr. Lute nodded with a smile. We will do our best, yes, she said. Seely took the lead, and the two dogs hopped into the sea to follow. Dr. Lute came behind them to make sure no one would lose their way on the journey to Dogger Falls. That's all for today. Tune in next time to find out how the story concludes. Or at least for now. Now, I'm joined by my six-year-old co-author, Hank. Hi, Hank. Hi. Okay, Hank, you and I just listened to our penultimate episode. 
Do you remember what that word means? Mm-hmm. Second to last? Mm-hmm. It's getting kind of exciting. Mm-hmm. What did you think about the story? Were you happy to see President Bernie Sandals come back? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, Hank, are you ready for a dog joke? Mm-hmm. Don't groan, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, what's a dog's favorite kind of pizza? What? Pepperoni. <laughs> we also have a big pile of jokes to play from friends. We have good ones from Callum, Amel, Joshua, and that really funny one that you love by Joshua's little sister, Megan. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. That's like your favorite one. Let's play one. that. What does a crow like to drink in the morning? Cock, cock, coffee. <laughs> what is a whale's favorite game to play? <laughs> what? Swallow the leader. <laughs> what do whales eat? Fish and ships. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Megan, tell us a joke. Joke. <laughs> tell us a joke. Joke. <laughs> and once again, listeners, thank you. We hope you subscribe and join us next time to hear the end of season one story. Stick around to the very end of this episode for a really fun song from two sisters we dig a lot, Jen and Wendy Bernard. You may recognize Jen's voice already as she sings the Power Dog theme song at the beginning of our episodes. This song is off of their extremely danceable album called I Dare You, and it's called I Want to Be a Cat. If you liked what you heard, you can see more content, including the show notes, at our website, PowerDogAdventures, all one word, dot com. There you can sign up for our frequently emailed newsletter and also submit any good dog jokes. And we'll be forever grateful if you feel like telling your friends about the show. Special thanks to the inimitable Jason Rourke, who makes these stories sound extra good with his wise counsel, recording, sound design, and even original music. Additional thanks to our friends, family, and community. Thank you as well to a group of wonderful experts and artists listed on our website for guiding us through this process to bring these adventures to you, dear listeners, to whom we give our deepest gratitude. Season one of this podcast has been made possible in part by funding provided by the Regional Arts and Culture Council in Portland, Oregon. Thank you, Rack. I want to be a cat, a lynx, a Persian, or a tabby. Want to wag my bushy tail and shake my whiskers when I'm crabby. Want to nuzzle and purr when I'm feeling secure. I want to be a cat. I want to be a cat. Yes, a long-tailed furry critter. Want to beg for your food. Wanna meow at the door and roll around on the floor I wanna be a cat Please don't put that silver bell on me Oh no I know the birds in the tree You think I'm their enemy Oh, The bells just aren't in style this season <laughs> I wanna be a cat And always clean my own germs Wanna slinkily rub up and then be held on my I want to sleep all day and get as fat as I may. I want to be a cat. I want to be a cat lying in the middle of the floor. Gazing off into space, pretending life's a big bore. Yeah, to tell you the truth, I love being a loop. I want to be a cat. Yeah, they need me outside to do the straight cat strut. Hello, boys. I want to be a cat and jump right onto your lap. I sink my claws into your flesh and give myself a tongue bath. Cough up a hairball or two. Hey, here's an extra for you. I want to be a cat. Meow. Hey.
Hey, joke. Say a joke. 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 joke.